Namaste, angels. I'm here to do the daily reading for Monday, October 31st, Halloween, or All Hallows Day. Um, I'm going to use my romance cards for the advice. Begin with the energy of playfulness. All the other cards that I saw were to be expected. A lot of release your ex, a lot of codependency, and a lot of um, the red flag. The signs are cautioning you, and that is because, that was, as we've been talking about for days now, um, many of us have somebody around us that we need to release, be it our ex or somebody else with whom we had some kind of relationship, being friendship or family or both, um, then we need to let go of them with love. I'm going to use my angel's harrow, beginning with the energy of the Knight of Water, who is emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposals, the need to balance emotions, an invitation to a social event. And I was shuffling and shuffling, and I kept seeing all this, a lot of the six of air, um, which I said could be Libra, uh, Venus, right? And um, a lot of wands, a lot of the Knight of Wands. And I'm going, where's the water? And then the Ace of Water popped up. And actually, it might be behind this because I see more blue here. Yep, there he is. He's... Okay, I hadn't seen this one. I saw that nine of air, which I don't like. This is a similar card. Anyway, you can see the night of fire coming up. Um, yeah, so that's to be expected too. I'm going to do the... I'm recording this um, video on the 29th. And I'm going to do the events for the 29th first. And then the events for the 31st. And... At the end of the video, after I finish the reading, I'll do the events for the 28th because I never um, went over those. And for anybody who's interested in knowing what went on, I'm going to include the 29th because when I clicked on the onthisday.com link and it opened, right away I saw something about somebody being beheaded. Um, and so this may be relevant to some of us or one of us in particular. This may be a past life of somebody who's watching or something. And we want to... Um, always try to help to jog those those memories so we can make sense of this huge puzzle together. So I'll just uh, start with that since we have a lot to do. Historical events, the 29th of October. In the year 539 BC, King Cyrus the Great of Persia marches into the city of Babylon, releasing the Jews from almost 70 years of exile and making the first human rights declaration. So there's our 70 years of exile. It's always done in periods of 70 years. And for us, um, right going through it right now, um, as I always say, at least according to me, if nobody else believes it and I don't, I don't care, <laughs> this is year 69, 2017 is year 70. So that's when we will be released, um, en masse from exile in the year 1268, Conradin, the last legitimate male heir of the German Hohenstaufen dynasty of Kings and the Holy Roman emperors is executed with Frederick the first Margrave of Baden by Charles the first of Sicily in the year 1665 the battle of Imbila Portuguese forces defeat forces of the kingdom of the Congo and decapitate King Antonio the first head uh, he was of the Congo and I believe another name for him they have slash and then this other word here was Invita a Inkanga in V I T A a, um, so space A, and then capital N again, K-A-N-G-A. -A. The year 1929, Black Tuesday, Wall Street stock market crashes, triggering the Great Depression. The year 2015, China announces the end of their one-child policy after 35 years. So in China, they actually used to um, kill extra children. Did you know because of their population? They had to do population control. I'm not saying it was right or wrong. I'm just saying what went on. And apparently this is the day that it ended after 35 years of being in practice. Did you know English adventurer, writer, and courtier Sir Walter Raleigh is beheaded for allegedly conspiring against James I of England on this day in the year 1618? Famous birthdays. Carl de Gerasi and his name is spelled in the beginning like King Osiris' real name and Thot's real name, uh, the Jehudi. Um, I never want to mispronounce King Osiris' real name. He told it to me so long ago. It begins with DJ. Um, 
Anyway, this gentleman, Carl, was born in the year 1923. On this day, he died in 2015. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is 78 years old. And I guess she'll be 79 on this date. Kate Jackson, who was one of the um, Charlie's Angels, is 68. And then they have birthdays for the following day, which I've already gone over the 30th. I think on two videos, the Diwali video and probably the daily for the 30th. Famous weddings in the year 437. Valentinian III, Western Roman Emperor, marries Licinia Eudoxia, daughter of his cousin Theodosius II, Eastern Roman Emperor in Constantinople. This unifies the two branches of the House of Theodosius. 1994, Impressionist Rich Little, 55, was comedian Jeanette Markey, 28, at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. 2004, Jackass member Chris Pontius, 30, weds Claire Nolan in Malibu. 2011, actress Eva Amuri, 26, weds famous Major League Soccer player Kyle Martino, 31, in Charleston, South Carolina. Famous divorces, 1951, singer-actor Frank Sinatra and first wife Nancy, so she's the one that made, uh, these boots are made for walking, Nancy Sinatra, love her, um, they divorced due to infidelity after 12 years of marriage. And 2010, country singer Randy Travis, 51, divorces manager Lib Hatcher due to a state of incompatibility which exists between the two parties after 19 long years of marriage. Country music's longest lasting couple, or one of them. Famous deaths. Walter Raleigh, they don't know when he was born, but he died in 1618. So it's Raleigh, as in like Raleigh, North Carolina, R-A-L-E-I-G-H. Nathan Bradford, I'm sorry, Bedford. Nathan Bedford Forrest, excuse me, uh, was born in 1821. He died on this day in 1877. He looks to be some sort of um, serviceman, like the military. He has a uniform on, I think. And uh, George McClellan was born in 1826. He died in 1885. Okay, so that was not so bad. I can go ahead and tell you who these people were. We're at the end. George McClellan is an American Union general. He's famous for during the Civil War, and he was a major general during the Civil War, and he was a Democratic presidential na Democratic presidential nominee in the year 1864, who later served um, as governor of New Jersey. He organized the famous Army of Potomac. Early in the war, he played an important role in raising a well-trained and organized army for the Union. He's a Sagittarius, born on December 3rd in the year 1826. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States. He died on October 29th in the year 1885 at the age of 58, 13, of a heart attack. Maybe it's going to start acting up again. This is what happened with the 28th. Like it didn't want me something or someone didn't want me to tell you what went on on the 28th. It's gone to some, it's just gone to something. Articles on events in history. This is not even the page anymore that I was on. Maybe Nathan Bedford is someone, something is trying to protect. Because it's gone back to this page that's not related that I didn't click on. I've just um, shuffled to the King of Earth now. So we may have the Midas touch on that day. And the Ten of Fire, opening to that, putting down our burdens. Ten of Fire is back. Landing on the Two of Fire, which came up in my love reading for the week um, for the masculine as advice to go ahead and make this decision he had to make. Perhaps the feminine has to make one as well. 
I don't know, but this card is all about being unable, unwilling to make a decision and having reached a stalemate, trying to pretend there's no problem and like it'll just go away if you ignore it. No. Two of bears back. Opening now to the star, though, Archangel Jophiel, happy times. Make positive, optimistic, long-term plans because you're on the right path. That's the wish card of the tarot. And up in Major Arcana. But the two of air is back. So you get to those decisions, people. Whatever they're about. In this case, they, they don't have to be about love. This is not a love reading. This is a daily uh, reading. So it can be about anything. Landing now on the moon, very appropriate, Archangel Haniel, important psychic events, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. The overall energy is the page of earth, which also came up during the love reading from a perspective of learning one another, teaching and learning um, from the universe also about love and how we want to be treated and how we should treat other people or how we, you know, plan to treat other people. Good news about financial matters, wanting to do something more challenging, a new area of study. So... Having seen two cards from the love reading, maybe we're going in that direction. I don't know. Um, or this can be with regard to um, just learning a new skill and honing a, new, honing a skill that you already have, maybe, as well. It's the overall energy. But Nathan Bedford Forrest is right on time. He was an American Confederate general and a KKK Grand Wizard. Yeah, the dark didn't want me to open this. Uh, why is he famous? He's a lieutenant general in the Confederate Army during the American Civil War. He is remembered both as a self-educated, innovative cavalry leader during the war and as a leading Southern advocate in post-war years. He served as Grand Wizard, the first Grand Wizard of the Ku, Ku Klux Klan, but later distanced himself from the organization. Interesting. He was born on July 13th in the year 1821. He's a cancer from Chapel Hill, Tennessee, USA. He died on October 29th in the year 1877 at the age of 56, 11 of complications from diabetes. Walter Raleigh. No, they're going to screw with me again. Yep. Just gone back to that articles page. He must have been a jerk too. Well, it sounds like the other guy tried to redeem himself. I don't know. Let's see. Walter Raleigh. I'll try one more time. Walter Raleigh was an English explorer known for popularizing tobacco in England and for his expedition to South America in search of a city of gold. He published an exaggerated account of his experiences in a book that contributed to the legend of El Dorado. He died on October 29th in the year 1618, execution by beheading. This is crazy. Let's hear about Charlie's angel, Kate Jackson. If it will allow us. Yep, Kate Jackson's an American actress. She was on Charlie's Angels and also Dark Shadows. 
She was born on October 29th in the year 1948. She's 68 years old. I guess she will be 69, like year 69 on her next birthday. Um, oh, today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Miss Jackson. Um, her birthplace, Birmingham, Alabama, USA. So she's 69 now. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is 78 years old. And maybe that's all they want us to know about her. She's Liberian, America's first elected female, I'm sorry, Africa's first elected female head of state. She is famous for having been the first elected black female president and Africa's first elected female head of state. So she's two firsts, the first black female president anywhere in the world and uh, Africa's first president. She was born on October 29th in the year 1938. She's 78 years old, a Scorpio from Monrovia, Liberia. And lastly, Carl de Gerasi, born in 1923. Are they going to let us find out who he is? Yes, he's an Amer American chemist. He was a scientist, chemist, and author, born in Austria, settling in the U.S. in 1939 to escape Nazi persecution in Europe. De Gerasi is most famous for creating the first synthesis of an oral contraceptive pill in 1951. Well, thank you, sir. Seriously. Um, he was working for someplace called Syntex, S-Y-N-T-E-X, a discovery that was to have a widespread social ramifications throughout the rest of the 20th century. De Gerasi continued to make major contributions to the field of organic chemistry, including the development of the use of antihistamines. In later life, De Gerasi became an author, writing novels, plays, and his novels, plays, and his autobiography. He was born on October 29th, the year 1923. He's a Scorpio from Vienna, Austria. He died on January 30th in the year 2015 at the age of 91. And it's dying again. <laughs> All right, change of plans. The masculine is the five of fire. Competing goals, bothersome details, conflict with others. And awakening with Archangel Gabriel. Look at things from a different perspective. Another card from the weekly reading, the weekly general in this case. Um, a temporary standstill. It's important to be yourself. Actually, I think this card popped up too. It didn't um, join the spread, but it popped up as I was shuffling and things um, during the love reading as well as part of my Kama Sutra deck. And in his subconscious is the four of air. Time to rest or take a vacation. Allow more time before making a decision. So maybe they're cutting you some slack with that two of swords. Um, for some of you, <laughs> meditation may provide answers. So you're saying you don't have to make it just yet if you take the time to really um, meditate on it and think on it in a healthy and positive way rather than pretend it's not there or that it'll go away. Um, they'll cut you some slack. Feminine. Ego, Archangel Jophiel, a false sense of entrapment, being overly focused on material things, negative or fear-based thoughts. This is the devil card in the traditional tarot. This also represents the sign of Capricorn, which I should have looked because I'm pretty sure something is going on with Capricorn that I'm not remembering exactly what it is. Um, that may explain this. Uh, in any case... We're also the nine of earth. I was very much so the nine of earth yesterday. I did my nails, um, wax, massage, like everything. Enjoying life's little luxuries, spending quiet time alone, successful self-employment. So that was my Friday night turn up. In our subconscious is life experience. 
Archangel Chamuel, a significant life event, a powerful revelation that leads to change. Time to spread your wings. So this is sort of like the energy that showed up again in the love reading about um, learning one another, right? And having that be the life experience. All these trials and tribulations and the good times too um, help to form whatever it is we have today, both individually and together as part of a union. Crowning is the two of fire. How sweet. The twin flame card. You've come into your own. New partnerships or contracts continue to move forward. So perhaps that is of what uh, someone is jealous and why they are five of firing you. And perhaps that is of what you are afraid, feminine, and why you're slipping back into ego because this is so very close. Right? This two of fire. So very close to you now. At our feet, at the root, is the seven of air. So um, more thievery, more like backhandedness, more betrayal, um, more lies, maybe behind your back, people smiling in your face and doing something, you know, other than when you're not around. Plans that need my vision. More going on than meets the eye and poor timing. And from Archangel Michael, at the heart of the matter is the king of the air, the king of air, who is brilliant, impartial, professional, and diplomatic. Speak your mind with confidence. Seek out professional advice. Balance mental and emotional considerations. And this is not a bad uh, spread, by the way. First of all, it's only the energy of a day or so, right? Some from, For some of us, it may be more than just um, the 31st. We may, you know, feel it other times. Um, but it's a, this is all temporary. The hangman itself, this card, um, is a temporary energy. So if that frightens you... It shouldn't. You shouldn't allow it to. Um, nothing wrong with being the nine of air. I mean, goodness, the nine of earth. This is about being happy with yourself, about being your own friend. Certainly nothing wrong with being the king of air. He's all about truth and diplomacy, fairness. Uh, and it sits right here under the two of fire. So it's to help make this partnership a healthy one, and right, an honest one, one where we stand in truth. And... Maybe that hasn't happened yet because somebody still needs some more time to make their decision. They've got something going on that's preventing them from being fully honest, fully truthful with themselves or anybody else. So they need to take more time in meditation. The two of these, however, make um, the 11 or a 2 as well. So it's like as above, so below here with these cards. This is conflict, um, quite possibly with a close um, friend or and or family member being wands for me, wands as opposed to the five of swords, for example, represent somebody to whom we are closer. Um, it, it's them that's trying to cause this conflict or strife or and or is jealous of us, which is a shame. But we've been seeing that over and over, this friend um, that's not really a friend, this friend of me that, you know, that we need to cut off. We need to cut the cords of negative attachment to them. And we may be blood related to them. And so, you know, they, they may be closely blood related to them. So, you know, in some cases it's super sad. Um, but it has to happen. Okay, so I've opened to chemistry and separation now. Separation back. Opening to trust. That's what we're going to have to do. Uh, trust this, because a lot of what's around us is not trustworthy. 
right? Fear is not. The devil is not. He's a liar. Um, we can trust ourselves, hopefully. <laughs> when we've reached this point of the nine of earth, we can trust ourselves. We're definitely our own friend at this point. Um, we can trust life experience. It, it's going to do what it does. You know, it's sort of like what I say about um, spirit all the time, what I say about God all the time. We can trust him to do what he says he's going to do. Whether we like it or not, whether we feel that it's, you know, a good thing, we think that, that God is supposed to be something that only, you know, does good things and sings kumbaya and showers flowers upon us and all that kind of stuff, you know, that's fine. That's a fantasy world that we, you know, in which we want to live. That's our own business. Everybody has the right to that. But really what it is, is um, yin and yang, like we are, right? We are made in his image. So if that's what we are, good and bad, Light and shadow, same thing is going on up there. We can we can figure that out by deduction. And so, good, bad, or indifferent to us, he does what he says he's going to do. Again, whether we like it or not. And that's what life experience does. So we can trust it to be that, if nothing else. We can trust it to be what it says it's going to be, which is life experience. We learn from whatever we go through. Trust this back. Open now to very soon. Clearly decide what you want. So maybe this goes to the decision again. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. So that's why you're being given a chance, masculine, to um, meditate on it some more. Because we don't want you to put the wrong thing into the universe, right? Because that's what's going to come to you. That's what spirit's about to send you. Whatever it is um, you ask for in the process of making this decision. So it's like the genie, right? When you rub the lamp and you got to say very specifically what, what it is you want because they'll give you some sort of variation where it's not wrong. They didn't give you the wrong thing. It's that you weren't precise, right? You weren't specific enough. So, okay, we've been blessed with the information, um, the historical events for the 31st, for the day for which this reading is. It's for Monday. In the year 1517, Martin Luther posts 95 theses on the Wittenberg Church and precipitates the Protestant Reformation. In the year 1541, Michelangelo finishes painting the Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. 1876 is the Great Backer Gang Cyclone. In 1876, it ravishes British India, which is modern-day Bangladesh, and over 200,000 people are killed. 1917, World War I, the Battle of Beersheba in southern Palestine, it was the last successful cavalry charge in history. 1918, the Spanish flu virus kills 21,000 people in the United States in one week. 2011, the world population reaches 7 billion inhabitants, according to the United Nations. So presently we're at 7.4. I think I spoke about this before. And by um, not just my math, but anybody who does the math, because it's math, a um, third of that is, came out to be, I think it was 2.442. Um, and verse 25, I, I did this all during the um, Hurricane Matthew, because I had seen all kinds of things about Hurricane Matthew. And I was matching them up, um, matching the events of the day up against the scripture, as I often do. Um Verse 2442 is a famous verse of um, the book of Matthew speaking to not knowing when God is going to come through, like not knowing the day, um, but being ready because he's coming. It was like an announcement. So, um, yeah, we reached 7 billion apparently on this day in 2011. Right now, 2016, we're at 7.4, which is 11. And I think we're about to have that one third, um, or we're in the process of having that one third um, of humanity cut down, as it says in the scripture. Did you know Arthur Conan Doyle publishes The Adventures of Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes on this day in the year 1892 or 9-11. And maybe it's going to act up again now. Maybe I told you guys too much. 
And it's dark is saying, oh, they're going to stumble upon something. Stop them. Let's see. John Keats is having a birthday or something. Either his birthday or he died. It was his, it's his birthday. He was born in 1795. He died in 1821. Chiang Kai-shek was born in 1887. He died in 1975. Hobart, a.k.a. Hobby Alter was born in 19 or Hobie was born in 1933. He died in 2014. John Candy was born in 1950, died on this day in the year 1994. Peter Jackson is 54 years old or nine. Vanilla Ice is 49 years old or 13. Famous weddings and it disappeared. We're going to get through this. Ah, I see why, perhaps why they don't want us to know what went on. I'm seeing, I, it, it won't scroll all the way down, but it looks like Harry Houdini died on this day in the year 1874, also um, 9-11. He was born, he died in 1926. George Hollis was born in 1895. He died in 1983, which is 111. Indira Gandhi was born in 1917. This is another big one that they might not want us to talk about. And she died in 1984. Federico Fellini was born in 1920. Another 111. He died in 1993. 11-11. River Phoenix was born in 1970. He also died in 1993, which again is 11-11. I didn't get to see the famous weddings and stuff that just moved around the screen. I'm going to click on River Phoenix and see if they'll let us see what's going on with these people. It's an American actor. Known for making his first notable appearance in the 1986 film Stand By Me, running on empty in 1990. 1988, and my own private Idaho in 1991, which won him a Volpe Cup for Best Actor at the Venice Film Festival. He was born uh, August 23rd in the year 1970. He's a Leo from Madras, Oregon, USA. He died on October 31st in the year 1993 at the age of 23 of drug overdose. And I think, if I remember correctly, he and Keanu Reeves... Um, of the matrix and bill and ted's excellent adventure and um parenthood and all kinds of things like that uh, were bffs frederico fellini i'm still probably not going to do the 28th because i can't deal with this <laughs> I'll have to come back again and figure out something else for the 28th because that must be a serious day that they do not want us to know about. Like, for real. Federico Fellini is an Italian film director and script, and script writer. He was an influential Italian film director and script writer famous for such films as Eight and a Half, La Dolce Vita, and La Strada. Fellini's films won him four Academy Awards for Best Foreign Language Film and one for Lifetime Achievement. He also won the Palme d'Or for La Dolce Vida in 1960. The word Fellinesque, or Fellini-esque rather, is used to describe Fellini's films with their emphasis on elaborate, often surreal dreams and nostalgia. Um, this has earned him the... has. And this word, phrase, has earned popular culture as well uh, as a well-known term. He was born January 20th in the year 1920. So he was born 120 in 120, um, which both are 111, under the star sign Capricorn. In Rimini, Italy, he died on October 31st, 1993, at the age of 73 of a heart attack. Indira Gandhi, I think she was, a, like, murdered, shot, if I remember correctly. 
and it's jumping all around and not letting me click on her perhaps that's why You know, I'm a Gemini. I get very impatient. Masculine, your advice is to flirt. Extend your lighthearted energy to others. I find this funny because it's like uh, <laughs> potentially counterproductive to trying to cut something off, something or somebody off. But this is your advice. Feminine, yours is healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Um, so, yes, it can be our parents or it can be other people um, with whom we've had a close relationship. Anybody with whom we've had a close relationship um, that we feel has contributed to our life experience. Um, maybe in that we've learned something from it, but that it wasn't the most um, comfortable or pleasant experience and we need we still need healing from it in order to move on um, in a positive direction to make sure that it never comes up again in our uh, family life. We don't want to uh, turn around and you know accidentally like teach it to our children and my my whole laptop just shut the hell down okay that is how much we are not to learn about these people or these days something really being kept from us so some of you may want to go ahead and take a peek yourselves on this day.com bring up the 31st and see who some of those people are i promise to come back maybe it was something just on that maybe just going over the 28th and the 29th um i'm sorry the 28th and the 31st uh for those of us who would like to finally be able to get an understanding as to some of the things that went on on those dates and how they may relate to us. I hope that you guys enjoyed the daily reading. Namaste, angels.